Hey everyone, welcome back to my video series How to Build a Graph Lex Part 2. In this episode, we're going to be configuring the kit according to our personal taste. Corbanth has sent us two sets of grips, D rings, and clamp or bubble cards according to what we want to configure our Graph Lex 2. Some people say that they want to go with a new hope because it was how the graphics was first introduced and they prefer it that way. Others prefer the Empire Strikes Back iteration because the Empire Strikes Back is where the graphics was used more in terms of action. However, some people may want to go with a Force Awakens or Last Jedi because it is where the graphics was last used. It is the more updated well, usage of the graphics. There are some minor differences between the Graphlex in terms of Last Jedi, Force Awakens to The Empire Strikes Back. The grips of The Empire Strikes Back are the same to The Last Jedi and Force Awakens, with one minor difference. You see the Graphlex has a bottom well, hole where it takes the red button thread, which goes over here, which will be our retention screw. Now I have removed the buttons, the red anodized buttons, which are more closer to a vintage Graphlex replica, because it was said that a long time ago, the Graphlex 2.0s had, well, light colored red buttons, which was not that accurate. So that's a big plus as well. They have these switches, which we broke off our uh, circuit board clamp card uh, in the previous installation of my video series. And well, the difference is for The Last Jedi and Empire Strikes Back, where The Empire Strikes Back has this specific thread on with the red anodized button, The Force Awakens has everything else, clamp card, D-ring, grips, but it has the A New Hope glass eye in place of the red button uh, well, thread. That is the only difference. It is minor, but it does well signify which version of the lightsaber it is. And to Graphlex fans, we can tell what configuration it is. Feel free to use whatever style you like. Now, I'm going to be going with the Empire Strikes Back because, well, Empire Strikes Back says it all. It's my favorite film in the entire Star Wars saga, and I want to honor my Graphlex in that iteration. However, if you are torn and you do not know what to decide from, there is an advantage and a solution to your problem. And I'm going to be going with that solution. Some of you may think I'm going to buy myself a second Graphlex and configure it to the version that I do not have at the time. That is also cool. But if you think to yourself, I'm on a bloody budget and I cannot afford a second Graphlex, at least now, and I want something to well, configure my Graphlex, don't worry, there is a solution to that problem. Corbanth on his website also sells the bottom halves of the Graphlex with the inner core without the anodized black parts on the Graphlex, just the inner core, the metallic part, which is the two piece thread, uh, which is threaded onto the back end of the Graphlex with the holes for the Empire Strikes Back and A New Hope, which is the seven, which is the six and seven holes respectively. So if you feel that you want to interchange the versions and configurations of the Graphlex, you can do so freely by purchasing the bottom half. I'm going to be doing that in the future. So I'm going to be going with the Empire Strikes Back configuration now, and I have currently purchased the um, bottom half where I'm going to be going with the A New Hope set. So when I feel that I'm bored of the Empire Strikes Back, I simply just open my clamp, which I have modified and will discuss in my next video. And I will simply unthread the back end of the saber nice and slowly and make sure that the clamp is nice and loose so that you do not scratch the back end of your lightsaber. And when I decide to interchange between the two styles, I will just unthread the bottom and unthread the uh, glass eye or the red anodized button section and I will interchange them whenever I see fit. Okay, so what happens when we get shipped with the Graphlex? Some of you may see or may have noticed that one of these have six holes and you may receive the seven hole end. The pommel section will fit into either hole which is a brilliant design by Corbanth. 
So whatever you decide to go with, you want to go with the six grips and just simply thread the six, sorry, the, uh, the pommel section to the six grips. Or if you want to go with the A New Hope seven grips, you go with this. You will not be spared a grip if you decide to go with the six holes. The six holes are for the Empire Strikes Back. So if you decide to go with these grips and you accidentally put them on your six grips, uh, you are not supposed to be uh, sparing one uh, grip. You're supposed to be using the seven holes, which are more close together. It is visible. It is something that you can actually see. Here you go. A New Hope and Empire. So since we're we'll going to go with uh, we're going with the Empire Strikes Back. We're going to just flip the back end of the lightsaber and use our pommel and thread it onto the back end with the six holes for the configuration we have selected. Okay, I'm not going to do this too tight. I'm going to put this over here. Now, another thing that I want to specify in terms of accuracy mods is that the A New Hope version has the clamp, uh, well, the entire clamp is on the left side, meaning that this section, when I unthread this, I'm going to unthread the screw that holds the clamp, and I'm going to show you something that you will have to notice. Now, when you unthread this hole specifically, it has one hole over here and you're going to think to yourself that this is where the clamp threads, if you can see the hole. Now, if you take your rafflex and you point the bunny ears up, your clamp should be like this, which means that your clamp is facing 90 degrees on the right of the bunny ears. For a new hope, you just simply take a 180 degree turn and your clamp lever is supposed to be facing up for the A New Hope version. And you think to yourself that is there a thread hole for my uh, Allen head? And if you just go for it and just, you know, thread your Graflex uh, clamp around enough, you will find that the hole is over here. So there's, there are two holes, one on the left side of the Graflex and one on the right side. So the clamp, this little groove here, which is where you thread your um, your screw inside, can be retained to the left for the uh, A New Hope, or to the right where the clamp faces down, the clamp lever faces down, for the Empire Strikes Back, Last Jedi, and uh, Force Awakens. I don't know why I say it in such a confusing order, but that's how it rolls off the top of my tongue. So that's how I'm gonna say it. So that's that. Now, one thing to keep in mind, I know it is too soon to say, but when you have installed your electronics in this section of the Graflex, I don't know if you can see it, but in this section, you will have a very, very small margin for your wires to travel through inside the clamp because we're going to be going with the clamp mods. And since we're going to go with the A New Hope or the Empire Strikes Back grips, the clamp mod can be applied to both styles. Now, if I'm going to be going and interchanging the clamp for the A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back, back and forth when I get tired of one or the other, you're going to think to yourself that that's going to be possible. But you're going to need to keep in mind that your wire is going to be traveling left and right, or you're going to be spinning it around. So that's something to keep in mind. If you want to switch the clamp and go for the accuracy mod, that is okay. Just leave a few wire slacking inside your core so that you can twist the wire with the switch that will be connected to your clamp. I, however, do not suggest that you do such a thing because it will stress your wire and one way or another, it is going to get ruined. Uh, so I suggest that you just decide to keep it on one specific side and I have seen a lot of uh, a New Hope version lightsabers with the clamp facing down, the clamp lever facing down on the right side of the lightsaber. It is not a problem um, 
But however, if you are that quirky and you decide that you want to go with uh, the accuracy mods where the clam faces left or right accordingly, uh, that is totally up to you. But I'm not weird like that, so I'm going to firmly solidify my clamp to the right side, which means the lever is going to be facing down when I hold my graph legs and the bunny ears are looking up. So, let us begin with the, uh, well, bonding the um, grips. Now, when you get the uh, grips for the Empire Strikes Back, one thing that I failed to specify until now is that these screws are going to be separate. They're not going to come within the notches itself. So when you see the notches and you see the screws missing, don't worry, it doesn't mean that they're not there. They're in the Empire Strikes Back bag and you're going to need to put them with your Allen wrench nice and slow. They are not threaded and since the uh, threads of your screw are going to be bonding against the plastic, it's going to be a tough uh, bind. So that is why I decided to go and do this before I put my grips onto my bottom end of the graph legs. So one thing that is very important to do right now is that since we have decided what we're going to go with is we're going to need to put the grips that we won't be using away. I'm going to be taking all of my A New Hope grips. I love A New Hope. It is the movie that started everything but um, I'm going to go with the Empire Strikes Back. And if I get bored, don't worry. Uh, if you also get bored, you can get a bottom end with the inner core, which is optional. You can just order the bottom end, uh, purchase it, and it will be shipped to you just this part and the inner core without the black anodized part. Uh, and you can actually decide to go. He will also send you, of course, a bag of the A New Hope or the Empire Strikes Back so that you can choose what you want to go for. And it's just about uh, $48 plus uh, shipping. $19 for international shipping and $10 for the United States. So it's practically a very economical uh, solution to if you want to interchange your grips. So with that out of the way, I'm going to be going full on Empire Strikes Back. So I'm going to take these and I'm going to put them aside for now. So let us focus on what we, we are going to be making. So one thing that I'm going to be doing to my Graflex is I'm not going to be unthreading the inner core because the modifications that I have made are not going to be shown as of yet. That's going to be for another video. So right now, what I want to do is I want to take these momentary switches that I broke off the clamp card that came with the Empire Strikes Back version of the, well, clamp. So you just simply break these off and it's very easy. Don't worry, you won't damage it unless you do it right. You just hold the two ends and you just split it. Now, I'm going to take this switch into the hole here, if you can see. It's hollow and it is a switch. So from what I've heard, if you guys want to go with the um, uh, red button switch on the top and on the bottom, uh, I have heard that you're going to need to be drilling and cutting a uh, parallel uh, hole inside your inner core. And to me, that sounds like too much of a hassle. But however, if you're going to go for the mod that you're going to go, um, you should do it. If you want to go for it, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be doing this in this video. I'm going to be going for the clamp uh, mod. So that's that. I'm going to throw that in there. And I'm going to be taking my precision screwdriver and I'm going to be gently just pressing it into place so that it firmly solidifies and clicks into place. Now, if it's not properly, you know, uh, I don't know if you can see this, but uh, the square part is not aligned to the Graflex. So if you're quirky like that and you have OCD, it may drive you crazy. However, I'm okay with that. And since I'm not going to be ever seeing that again, you're not going to be needing some glue for the switch. All you can do is just press it in, click it a few times. And as you can see, it's firmly in place. It's not going to come out. Actually, you're going to be needing some uh, pliers to get these out nice and slowly. You do not want to pinch the sides of the red button. And you have a switch. That's that. So we're going to be doing the same for the bottom. We're going to be taking the uh, momentary switch 
and I'm going to be putting it in the little uh, hole for my red button. It just pops in. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if you saw that. So I'm going to be taking my screwdriver and I'm going to be pinching it in. And that's that. So you take your red bottom, your red cap, and just click it in place and as you can see this one is firmly uh, in place. So what this acts is, is it's going to be a retention screw. However, it does have a hole in the middle of the thread, as you can see. And my guess is that you can pass a wire in there, or maybe two. I'm guessing just one wire in case you want to do a activation switch at the bottom of the Graflex. That is the beauty of the Graflex 2.0, 2.1 and 2.5 in general. The Corbanth kit has a variety of how you can actually use a uh, activation switch on your Graflex. Do you want it to be on the top? You have a button. Do you want it to be on the bottom? You have a bottom. So that's that. If you want it to be a clamp switch, you can make it into a clamp switch. And to prove it, it has these two metallic um, sections to it, which to me signifies that it's to help with the activation on the clamp card, which is useful. To me, it's not going to make a difference to this build. It's not going to be essentially a difference, but uh, it's always nice to know that uh, Corbanth has considered uh, any kind of modification needed for the graphics. Okay, so we have our top part, which is practically ready. It does resemble Luke's lightsaber from Empire Strikes Back. And we're done with that. Now, I'm going to be going to the bottom end, which is the very tricky part. You see, the grips have these red uh, plastic, well, bonds to the adhesive tape that will basically um, bond the grip to the uh, metal base of the lightsaber. If you do this wrongly and you just do it in, in, in skew like this, or you know just a little uh, skew, you're going to need to be very careful because when this bonds and you press it against the, um, the bottom end of the Graflex, it is going to stick very firmly and taking it off will be very damaging, it will be catastrophic, it will not be good for your Graflex. So I do not suggest that you just uh, hastily just take it and just peel the uh, plastic off and then just you know press it against it and say, oh no, I screwed it up, uh, it is stuck on skew and I cannot fix it. You won't be able to fix it. So you need to be very precise. You have one shot at this and uh, I suggest that you do it correctly. So what we're going to be doing is uh, we can use the PVC cutting mat, which is fairly straight. My workspace is leveled. And you can use your clamp as a guide for the Graflex uh, strips to bond properly. Now, I'm going to tighten the clamp fairly quickly. I actually unthread this and it's coming apart. It's destroyed. Um, we're going to thread this real quick. Um, so yeah, you actually got to see what the clamp is composed of. Don't panic, it's something that can be fixed. There we go. So we're gonna thread this so it can tighten. And let's go over this nice and carefully. Let us just zoom in a little bit. There we go. So one thing that you are going to definitely need before bonding the adhesive to the metal is you're going to need to take a cloth like I have with the flowers on it so it's nice and elegant. And you're going to be needing Take these aside because you're going to need your workspace to be as clean as possible. 
and we take this onto the side and your uh, cleaning alcohol. So alcohol is great for cleaning any oils from our fingers and our hands and generally anything that can and ruin, well, anything. So this is a nice principle to apply to anything that you do uh, when you're trying to apply adhesives. So let me just zoom out a little bit. There we go. So you can see what I'm doing in full. So I'm just rubbing and it's shining very nicely. I don't know if you can see this, but it has a very nice glow to it. It's beautiful, it's shiny. And well, I'm going to put some more alcohol to it. So just rub, 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 rub. Make sure that it's nice and squeaky clean. And if you feel that you want to be 100% sure that you're not going to be getting any oils on your finger, you can use any rubber gloves, um, disposable rubber gloves, that is. And that's completely up to you again. So I'm going to be going over this really carefully. Um, you want to just take off the plastic very carefully. Be sure not to unstick the white adhesive uh, double-sided tape. You just want to do this very carefully. You just want to focus. There you go. Just slowly, slowly getting the red sticker off. And there you go. There you have it. It's coming off, it's peeling off. So if you want some help and you want to get your first notch, which is always the hardest, you want to get it off, uh, you want to get it on uh, real nice and um, secure, um, you can take your clamp lever Unthread it. And just, you know, just tighten it enough to the point where it's going to well, stay nice and steady. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another grip because this one has been peeled off. And I'm going to take one of my grips and I'm going to butt my clamp I'm going to unthread the clamp and butt it up against the, um, just enough, I'm going to butt it up against my, um, my grip so that I know that it's going to be put on straight because the clamp is 100% straight. So then I'm going to just tighten this so it just stays there the clamp is not going anywhere. So that is, for me, that is a great indicator. Now you're going to want to eyeball it and you're going to want to make sure that the bottom section of the grip is aligned to the pommel. You want to make sure that it's a straight line, that it's not skew. So that is completely up to you. That is completely up to you to focus on. So I'm going to be going for this I'm going to take some rubbing alcohol again and I'm going to clean my uh, bottom section because I really, really, really want this to bond properly. Okay, so you wait for about a few seconds for it to dry. You can actually see it dry off and it's nice and shiny again. You're going to need to do this a few times because you're going to be uh, unfortunately touching the metal. So here we are. We're starting to peel off the adhesive bonds. Take off the plastic tape. Take off the plastic tape on the bottom. And we decide where we're going to stick it. Thankfully these grips have these, you know, they're the T type grips which can help you hold this section and you just gently decide you don't press it against too hard you make sure that it is straight just put it in there 
and you just eyeball it. You might want to lower your head a little bit and you just want to eyeball it. And when you're sure that it is 100% uh, straight, you just press against it. Not Don't press your clamp down because you might use too much force uh, and you might just uh, bring the whole thing down. So you're going to need to touch the bottom section of your half and there you go, you start bonding. You just hold it together and you just wait for the metal and the adhesive glue to uh, bond. You just hold it, you use all of your strength and that's it. So then you might want to um, do this nice and evenly and that's that. So this is not going to be coming off okay now it's firmly in place but you still want to hold on to this there you go and that's that you can see i'm trying to stick it off it's not coming off i'm going to tighten it once more because i'm not 100 percent sure um there we go So I'm using my uh, finger to, uh, as a guide to see if, if there are any edges from the bottom grip and I'm actually feeling that it's nice and even. It is parallel to the bottom end, to the lip of the bottom end. As you can see here, it is perfectly aligned. And I can call that a very good bond. And I'm going to apply the same principle to the rest of my grips. So uh, before we do that, you want to clean the rest of the grips. So apply more alcohol and go into the next grip hole. Clean that hole, wait for it to dry for a few seconds. If you're not sure that you did a good job, just do it again, take your time. You're not in a hurry, no one is rushing you. Okay, just take your time. You want to do this right. So take your time, wait for it to dry. Um, I see a few stains. So I'm just going to uh, wipe them away in a downward fashion so that I'm sure that it's nice and clean. You can see that too. So let's go for the next grip. Nice and easy, nice and slow. Of course, when we've applied all of the uh, grips, we're going to be holding it down and tightening it as much as we can, uh, as tightly as we can, so we can make sure that the grips are 100% bonded. And we apply the same principle. We use the clamp as a guideline. We do not stick it. Now you can see that I've kind of done this a little skew. So I use the clamp as my guideline again to make sure that I'm not going to do this skew. Switch it, just twist it a little bit. Use your finger as a guideline again to see if it's aligned. No problem here. So let's, let's press it again. Here we go. Squeeze it, bond. Make it bond. And you know, just use your fingers to press against it like this. And that's another solid uh, joint. I don't feel it skew. I mean, I'm using my hand to see if there's anything skew. You just can, you can feel when something is out of place when it's not properly. Um, adhered to. I don't see anything skew with this. I'm actually quite happy. So I'm going to press this against down. I don't feel, you know, a gap. I don't feel my finger uh, loosening uh, or tightening when I go through the grooves between the grips. This uh, section, I feel it even, which is a good sign. And I just tighten it once more. There we go. So now I'm sure. Um, I'm going to be going over this again. So more rubbing.
that's it. Take the trash away. You can actually apply some alcohol to your hands to make sure that you get some of the oils off. That's why you've got your cloth and your alcohol and everything. Be careful to not um, get your fingers caught in the adhesive. Um, there we go. Very, very gently. Hold it against the T grip. We we aim. I want to align this. Feel that it's on nice and properly. Uh, it's coming together very nicely. I just want to take a moment to admire this, but with one grip to go, I guess I should wait and be patient. And the last time that we're going to be applying the adhesive. Clean it up, you know the drill and take the plastic off the grip. Nothing is skew. I'm very happy with what I did. I'm actually quite excited. Um, so this is that. This is, this is it, this is that, this is everything. We're done. So our bottom end configuration is complete. So let's take a moment to inspect what we've done. And I'm quite happy that the grips align with the clamp. You can see it's nice and aligned. The pommel section with the clamp, sorry, the pommel section with the grips are also aligned nicely. See nothing is sticking out. And that is a good well joint. Oh actually I'm gonna save that for when we do some good joints when it comes to soldering, which is the real challenge because like I said, I am a rookie. So what you do is now you want to uh, unscrew the clamp. Sorry, that's tightening it. Like I said before, my clamp has been modified, but don't worry, I'll catch you up to speed on the next episode. And there we go, it comes off nice and easy. And that's that. You have now properly applied your adhesives. Now, that would be the case if you were making the a New Hope uh, version because you don't have any uh, screws to screw into the bottom. But since I'm going with the Empire Strikes Back uh, Force Awakens Last Jedi version, I'm going to have to do these one by one. So it's no biggie, just take the screws. If you've already put them in like I did, all you have to do is just tighten it. Not too much, not too little, but you know, just enough so that they can actually uh, well, touch the grip. There you go. I don't know if you can see that. There it is. All of the other ones, you see this one isn't properly uh, threaded in. Neither is this, nor especially this. So let's go for it. Let's just uh, thread these in real quick. Uh, in. It's no biggie. Just threading in the uh, screws for the back end of the lightsaber. And uh, I think I'm practically done with this. So I don't know if you can see, they've all been screwed in. It's nice. That one's okay too. This one's good. 
Good, good, good. Everything's good. So that's that. Now let's go for the D ring. And just put this over here. Um, you're going to be needing your, let me see, your 564th Allen wrench. The one that we used for the uh, unscrewing of the uh, clamp screw was the 116th Allen wrench. I'm sorry that I failed to specify that earlier. Oops, sorry, wrong Allen wrench. Huh, look how that's set. Um, but you are going to thread these in when you find the thread hole. There we go. So you see these uh, sound holes and you think that these screws can screw into any direction, but unfortunately that's not the case. They're not all threaded, so you're going to need to find which one specifically uh, threads. So all you do is uh, you just play with the D-ring around until you find the threaded holes and I know I'm just kind of being silly right now but can you tighten that and that's your D-ring. Okay so for my quirky friends that are looking to get everything lined up properly let us take our graph legs and let's uh, put it together. Um, hold the lightsaber this way and uh, let's find where the thread is oh wait I'm, I'm kind of lost what am I doing no wait I put it on up inside out upside down sorry so um, you want to align the bunny ears with the clamp you want them to be in a 90 degree uh, well, section, sorry. So I'm going to be going about, you know, I think this is nicely aligned. So I'm going to hold this. And uh, I'm going to hold my clamp down so I can screw my uh, retention screw with the 1 16th Allen wrench. There we go. That's that. Let's check again if it's aligned. I think that's, that's perfectly aligned, or is it not? Yeah, I think it needs to, uh, no, actually I think it's good. Or I think it needs to face down just a little bit. So I'm going to open this, loosen this just a bit, and make this face down just one tiny bit, that's all. You know, there we go. That's 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 better. Let me just tighten this real quick. And that's that. So, like we said earlier, when you thread the bottom half to your clamp and uh, the rest of the lightsaber. This is a little snug, so you do not want to force the back end of the lightsaber in because it will scratch the lightsaber. However, you may, you may think to yourself, I'm not going to be using this part, it's not going to be visible anyway, so you don't mind, but why should you ruin it? It won't look nice. It won't look nice when it's worn. So I'm going to unthread my clamp just a little bit. And now it just fits, it's a lot easier, I don't force the lightsaber in. Uh, it's not forced, it's perfectly uh, able to get in there and get threaded. And you just thread this 
Nice and easy. There you go. Now, my friends that are a little quirky, uh, let me put in the clamp card to be a little more accurate. Let's tighten the clamp switch down. There we go, that's very nice and tight. Now, the D-ring and the middle grip is not aligned with the clamp switch and my OCD friends are having a heart attack. So let's just save them by unthreading the clamp just a little bit and screwing this backwards a little bit. There we go, that's it. So if you're worried that if you've unthreaded and to, if it's, if you're afraid that if you have threaded your back end and you unthreaded it might uh, be a little wobbly and loose in the clamp, don't worry. When you have modified the clamp lever like I have, and I will show it in the next video, I promise, when you tighten this enough, not only will your clamp card not be um, playing around, but you will be able to assure that both clamp cards are firm and that your back end is okay. So when I do this, clamp card is secure and the middle grip is also aligned, as you can see here. What about the pommel? Okay, so you just unthread it a little bit and there you go. There, the pommel, the D-ring is aligned with the middle grip that aligns with the uh, circuit card with the rest of the Graflex. Now, if you're going to be carrying this around, you might want to thread it a little bit because it's just an accuracy mod when you're showing it off. Obviously, you're not going to be showing it off when you're using the thread itself, the graphics. So, you might want to tighten it up. So, what have we done up to here? We have managed to successfully convert the kit to the uh, style that we want. Now, there's this little hole that's protruding, that's not a problem. All you have to do is unscrew this. Oh. And hold on. Just gonna, I just wanna twist this a little bit, so. I'm gonna loosen the retention screw. Just enough. There we go. Line the bottom grip. Slide the clamp card into place. Tighten the retention screw. Nope. Just needs one more turn. And there we go. That's it. Okay, so what we've done up to now is we have successfully converted our lightsaber into the modif well into the version that we wanted. If you wanted the Empire Strikes Back and you followed every step of the way, this is how it's going to be. You want the Force Awakens? Hold on, I have got you right here. Force Awakens, Last Jedi. Like I said, it's not going to be a problem. Just simply go to your Empire Strikes Back. Uh, sorry, your uh, New Hope bag. Um, go for the glass eye replica. Simply unthread the uh, lower red button section and go and thread the glass eye replica on. Oh, sorry, just... There we go. My hands are shaky. They're shaky as hell. <laughs> Anyway, so you have the Last Jedi and the Force Awakens modification. It's exactly the same as the Empire Strikes Back, only the glass eye replaces the red button. But if you're happy with this, then that's that. I, however, am going to be going for the full-on Empire Strikes Back version. So I'm going to be taking the glass eye and I'm going to be putting it back into the A New Hope bag. I'm going to take my red button replica, I'm going to thread it back, and that is your Empire Strikes Back. 
If you wanted to go with a new hope, you have to follow the exact same steps. Be very careful with the adhesives, take off the red stickers like we did before and use the clamp as a guide, but you will have to do seven grips instead of six. So you're going to have to be a little more careful. Since you do not have any screws to thread, uh, that won't be a problem. All you have to do is just tighten the saber and uh, that's that. Make sure that you're using rubbing alcohol and a uh, lint-free lint -free cloth that's nice and clean. This one just came out of the dryer, so I'm sure that it's clean and I'm going to wash it again because I want to make sure that everything I have is clean and perfect. And that's that. So uh, you have successfully, if you followed the steps right now, you have successfully configured your lightsaber to your preferred uh, episode uh, version of the lightsaber. So uh, I will be seeing you guys in the next uh, part of how to uh, build a Graflex. And in that particular episode, I'm going to be showing you all of the modifications that I did off camera by using a Dremel. I don't have a Dremel on me, but fortunately I have a Dremel at work, which my uh, boss and supervisor are very uh, um, kind to let me use. I'm going to be going over every modification that you're going to be needing to do with a Dremel. So either you have one or you have access to one, you can follow these steps to make sure that you're going to be doing the exact same modifications in order to carry on with your lightsaber conversions. So without further ado, I'm going to be signing off now and I will see you in the next video of how to build a Graflex part three, necessary modifications for the build. Everything that I have ever modified will be specified in that video. So if you've panicked up to now and have not understood what I've done, I will explain everything next time. So until then, uh, we will also be taking the lightsaber apart, the inner core, everything, the pins, the screws, the beer tab, everything. So um, without further ado, uh, I will be seeing you guys next time and we will continue our build uh, step by step of the way. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, comment, like, uh, subscribe and uh, stay tuned for my uh, next video and let's do this step by step. So see you guys. Thank you.